Good morning. I'm going to take you through chapter one standardized test practice um, because I have to be home right now until we get um, the results of my COVID test. Please don't worry. I honestly think it's just a run of the mill virus um, because I feel better already and it's Sunday. So let's, I'm going to walk you through the chapter one standardized test practice. So if you take a look at the first problem, we have two laboratories using radiocarbon dating to measure the age of two wooden spear handles found in the same grave. We have lab A um, calculated the age to be 2,250 plus or minus 40 years, and lab B finds that age to be 2,215 plus or minus 50 years. What you want to concentrate on is the plus or minus 40 and plus or minus 50. And I also want you to remember um, that precision describes the variation that you see when you measure the same thing using the same method. Therefore, C is correct, and that is lab A's reading is more precise than lab B's. Let's take a look at number two. Which of the following is equal to 82.2 centimeters? Well, let me take you through each of these. If we do it in meters, we move the decimal point two places. And so that'll give us 0 0.862 meters. So it's definitely not A. If we do it in millimeters, that gives us eight. We'd have to move the decimal place one to the right which gives us 862 millimeters, so it's definitely not B. In decimeters, we move it one to the left, which gives us 8.62 decimeters. That's not right. So let's take a look at kilometers. First of all, since it's 86.2, we're gonna move this um, one, two, three, four, five places, but when we write that in scientific notation, your decimal only goes after the first non-zero number. So in this case, it's eight. So 8.62, and then how many places would we have to move it to the left to make it kilometers? Well, from the eight, we'd move it one, two, three, four. So we'd make that a negative four because we're moving to the left. So you're making the number smaller. Therefore, C is correct. It's 8.26 times 10 to the negative fourth kilometers. Uh, let's see, number three. Jario has a problem to do involving time, distance, and velocity, but he has forgotten the formula. The question asks for a measurement in seconds. And the numbers are given have the units of meters per second and kilometers. So what's he going to do to get the answer in seconds? Well, the answer is B, but let me show you why. So you, the given units are meters per second and kilometers. So how do we get that answer in seconds? I always like to put numbers with my units just because it helps me. So we have one kilometer and one meter per second. Well, how would I set this up? I do one kilometer and then I'd want to cross those out. And remember, whatever is on top or bottom has to be true. So one kilometer is equal to 1000 meters. So because it's right beside of this, we would be multiplying by 1000. So it would look like 1,000 meters divided by one meters per second. And you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute. We wanted our answer in seconds. Well, we know right away that our meters cancel out. So how does that leave us with seconds? Well, we want um, anytime a unit is under two fraction bars, like here's one fraction bar, and then meters per second, there's our second fraction bar. The unit actually 
then jumps to the top. So instead of being per second per second, this would now be equal to seconds. And that's how we end up with seconds. We'll go, we will be doing this probably thousands of times before you're out of this class. So you will get the hang of that. Okay, so the next question wants to know, what is the slope of the graph? And so I just use the y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1 method. And I chose the points um, for Y2, I chose number 1, and for Y1, I chose 0.5. So I chose, whoops, sorry about that. You see where I chose? Here and here are my two points. And then the X, X2, is 4 minus 2, both from those same points. That gives me... 0.5 divided by 2, which gives me a slope of 0 0.25 meters per second squared. Because we have y rise meters per second over run divided by seconds, which is the same as saying meters per second squared. All right, let's look at number 5. Which formula is equivalent to D equals M divided by V. So this is the formula for density. Density equals mass divided by volume. Well, we can get at this in two ways. So first of all, we can divide both sides by M. And so that'll cancel. And then we're left with D divided by M equals 1 over V. Well, that's not the same as, <clears throat> excuse me, as V being on top. However, now we can use the recipro reciprocal, easy for me to say, reciprocal of both sides to get this. M over D is now V over 1, so M divided by D equals V. Is that a possibility in your book? Absolutely. It is the very first one. And so your answer is A. The other way to get that um, mathematically is I multiply both sides by V. Then that cancels out. And then I have... Hold on, it's hard to write with a camera. Then I get this. And then I divide both sides by D, which also leaves me V equals M over D, which is um, A, I believe. Yeah. And so A is the correct answer for number five. All right. A, co a computer simulation is, is an example of B, a model. And now for your free response questions. You want to calculate an acceleration in units of meters per second squared given a force in newtons and the mass in grams on which the force acts one newton equals one kilogram one kilogram meter per second squared. Sorry about that. So first of all they want us to rewrite the equation F equals MA in terms of A. So Let's rewrite it to get acceleration first. All I'm going to do is divide both sides by M, which will give me, then I can cancel that out, and F divided by M because we have to do the same thing to both sides, and that gives me F over M equals A. Perfect. Part A is done. Part B. What is the conversion factor you will need to multiply by in order to convert grams to kilograms? Well, if I'm given kilograms, I need to cancel that out. And kilograms are equal to 1,000 grams. So that's true. 
This is true too. One kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So both of these are true. So if you had it written either way, either one kilogram divided by 1,000 grams, or the same thing here, 1,000 grams divided by a kilogram, either way you're correct. C. Now we're going to do the actual problem. So we know that our force is 2.7 newtons. Our mass is 350 grams. Well, you have to convert your mass to kilograms first. So you take what you're given, 350 grams <laughs> divided by 1,000 grams, and then that grams cancel out equals one kilogram. So 350 divided by 1,000 equals 0 0.350 kilograms. So that there's our conversion. And now we're going to solve for acceleration. So acceleration, just like we switched it up at the top, equals 2.7 newtons divided by 0 0.350 kilograms. This will give you 7.7 .7 meters per second squared. If you're wondering how in the world we got meters per second squared out of newtons and kilograms, please remember that a newton is a kilogram meter time, or I'm sorry, a kilogram times meter per second squared, and we divided by a kilogram. So that cancels and we're left with meters per second squared. So that's how that ended up giving us that. So you have to remember how a Newton is derived in order to understand your units at the end. And then finally, number eight, our knockdown drag out <laughs> number. Find the equation for a line of best fit for the data shown below. Well, a lot of you chose 12 as your um, y-intercept. However, that's not really the point of y-intercept. Instead, it's going to be 11. And I, I'm not going to be able to draw this um, very well holding the camera. But I want you to remember that a line of best fit will split the data points half above and half below if it cannot go through most of them. This line equals D equals negative 6 over 7 plus, whoops, I don't know why I put two pluses, um, plus 11. However, those of you who chose 12 will also get credit because I do understand why you chose it. And right now, I'm just, I want you to get used to the fact that sometimes we do arrive at answers differently in physics, and that's okay. All right? Not always. Not always. And sometimes I'll call you out and say, nope, you're, you're just wrong. <laughs> and, but I'll show you how. I'll show you how to get there. But I want you to remember, you have to rely on your formulas, on things like this, on 8, where we're eyeballing a line of best fit, eh, that's a little bit different. All right. That's all for now. I hope you guys have a good day, and I hope I see you very, very soon.